Good evening everyone and happy midweek to all of you. Welcome to our midweek service tonight. As we all know, we are still dealing with the book of the Old Testament. And so far, we are now in the book of Haggai. So for this uh, evening's message, I will be sharing with you about the book of Haggai. And before we proceed on that, may I invite you to bow your heads with me and let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, this evening, O Lord, we would like to thank you for the service that you have given us. I pray, Heavenly Father, that please be with us, O Lord, in our study. Help us to understand the message and bless also the people who will be listening tonight and those who are watching. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you will guide us, that you will teach uh, us tonight, that we may be able to understand your will for us. Help us also to realize uh, what we need to do, uh, especially in this time. May you always open our understanding that we are truly in the last days and uh, we are looking forward for new things to come. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this evening, yes, we will go to the book of Haggai. So if you have Bible with you, please uh, open it with me to the book of Haggai. And we are almost done in the book of the Old Testament. The book of Haggai has only two chapters, as far as I know. And these two chapters actually uh, are full of the message or messages of Haggai. He always mentioned that this is what the Lord Almighty says. And in some commentators, uh, he said that more than 25 times in in just two chapters, okay? And I think that is uh, his formula as uh, was trying to say that this message is actually uh, a message from God. This is what the Lord Almighty says. So, when we look at the book of Haggai, you will understand uh, as you read the two chapters of Haggai uh, that he ministered uh, to the Jewish community after the return from exile in Babylon. Alright? And this book, as far as I know, and some commentaries also mentioned that this is perhaps the most precise dated of all documents in the Bible because each of his four prophetic messages is dated to an exact day. And you can see that in chapter 1 verse 1, chapter 2 verse 1, and verse 20. Of verse 10 and also verse 20 and this is during the second year of the reign of Darius the first okay so the message of Haggai is actually focused on uh, number one the wrong priorities of God's people okay and at the message of God for his people to build, build the temple of the Lord. So we will start uh, for us to uh, understand this message. When you look at chapter 1 in, in your Bible, verse 1, I'll be reading from NIV in the second year of King Darius on the first day of the sixth month. The word of the Lord came through the prophet 
Hegai, to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest. And this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say, The time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai, Is it a time for yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? So you would notice the um, I see a conversation between God's people and himself, uh, a series of question and answer. And this is about building God's house. Uh, why the the message is like this? You know, if you uh, came from another place and you moved to another place, uh, your priority is what? Your priority is to settle down, okay? Uh, or if you want, if you, you buy a property then you need to beautify <laughs> well in this version it says paneled uh, take care of your house first make it look good okay if you have a new home a new house the same way the background again the people of god just came from the exile in babylon and the kings made a decree that they could build uh, the temple, the wall, and the government of God's people in the promised land. So they go back there, and once they arrive, they were busy in their own houses. It seems that they forgot the, the house of God. And that is why the conversation is like this. Again, let me read in verse 2. And this is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you, yourselves, to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? And then... This is what the Lord Almighty says, Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Simply saying, you work hard, you all these things, but it seems that you never enjoy all those things. You eat but never have enough. You drink but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Meaning, yes, you earn wages but... You never enjoy it and then verse 7 this is what the Lord Almighty says give careful thought to your ways go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored says the Lord so look at the word here so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored says the Lord what is our priority? And this is the message of God for us today. What is our priority? As we all know, we, uh, Filipinos in the Lower Mainland, the Seventh-day Adventist uh, Filipinos, uh, we're, we were all immigrants in this place, and our priority is to live up okay to the way canadians live and most of the time you would see 
uh, some some Adventist as if their priority is to go first and satisfy first their needs and the needs of relatives in other parts of the world. Well, that is good. That is good. That is good if they don't or we don't neglect our spiritual life. But sad to say, many people, okay, uh, they don't have the appetite to attend church service because of the wrong priorities in life. And this is what the message of the Lord told to God's people during the time of Haggai. They were busy in their own houses, but they neglected the house of the Lord. And that is why God said, if you want me if you want you to honor me then please build my house of worship now again in verse 9 you expected much but see it turned out to be little what you brought home i blew away why declares the Lord Almighty because of my house which remains a ruin while each of you is busy with your own house it's real amazing we all know in the Bible even in the book of Psalms and in the New Testament that God's dwelling place is in heaven okay this earth is his footstool. What kind or where is the house that you can build for me? Okay. But in reality, why God summoned his people to build this house of worship? Because the center of everything, the center of their success is centered on their relationship with God. Now, in our situation as immigrants, what is our priority and who is our priority? Again, let me say this. Some people, they prioritize what they see as priority. But for God, no. Your priority, even Jesus Christ said, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness in all these things shall be added unto you it is the same message that jesus christ said and all these things shall be added unto you now for during the time of Haggai, it is the same thing okay so that's why he summoned his people please Go up into the mountains and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You would say, well, pastor, I cannot build, you know, church in Surrey or in the lower mainland. Just me and me alone. God knows that. And that's why we need uh, our brethren we set aside uh, money for that and you have your goal God knows this God knows this let's say in 12 years we want to have like a half million Canadian dollars in 12 years so in 20 or 24 years you have 1 million right so at least you put aside all the brethren, put, put aside something for the Lord. And not only for ourselves. Uh, as I said earlier, many people, many Adventists fail to understand this one. As if 
uh, we don't need to build a house of worship for the Lord and we will just rent for the rest of our lives and the next generation and the following generation I do believe that is not the plan of the Lord for us but when we see other church building we have this you know uh, desire in our hearts to have our own house of worship but when you ask and when we ask ourselves what are the things that we do in order to build the house of worship none why because just like the priority of God's people during the time of Haggai they prioritize first their houses and that's why they ask like this is it a time for for you for yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin people say you know these people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the lord's house i realize that when you have 10 or 20 people they they usually say well it is not time for us to build a house of worship we're just only 10 or 20. <laughs> now the question is when will you start saving for house of worship this is the message of god for us filipino here in the lower mainland let's say we live in surrey right surrey is a big city in every in, let's say in every corner of surrey the four corners of the city of surrey if we have one filipino church our old church in every corner of city and one in the center i think we can uh, rezone or we can zone it that this zone is our zone of ministry okay and this zone is our zone of ministry and by doing that we can saturate the the city of surrey but sad to say uh, some people they don't like it and again when we look at Haggai chapter 1 verse 13 then Haggai the Lord's messenger gave this message of the Lord to the people I am with you declares the Lord so the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua son of Josadah the high priest and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty their God so the ministry of Haggai uh, was actually successful because God's people responded to the message now the question is is it the same for us are we going to respond positively uh, to God's um, message and that is the question now look at chapter 2 because the book of Haggai is only has only two, two chapters verse 4 but now be strong Zerubbabel declares the Lord be strong Joshua son of Josadak the high priest be strong all your people of the land declares the Lord in work for I am with you verse 6 this is what the Lord Almighty says in a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory says the Lord Almighty the silver is mine and the gold is mine declares the Lord Almighty the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house 
says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. So I hope that you understand what I have just read to you. The uh, message of God is this. Be strong, okay? Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you. As God was saying to them, please, you can do it because I am with you. The same word, the same message that God is giving to each and every one of us. If you put in your heart the desire or the plan or the pleasure of God to put up a church of worship in this place, God says to you, be strong, declares the Lord. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. Meaning, do it because I am, I am with you. This is what the Lord desires from us. Okay? That if we believe, we can do it. And you don't need to compare yourself why other Christian denomination they have a beautiful building? Why we don't have one? What is the answer? The same answer that God has given to the people of God during the time of Haggai. Because we put our, our priorities in a wrong place. We don't mind what God desires and that what can bring honor to his name. Now, you know our book, Desire of Ages, this, that, that book, okay, the, the title of that book came from this, this chapter, chapter 2, verse 7, The Desire of All Nations. Or the desire of, of ages. The, the desire of ages. Okay. And it says here. I will fill this house. With glory. Says the Lord. Now if you. Try to understand. Why Jesus Christ was so. Uh, zealous in cleansing the temple. In the New Testament. Again. Because the priority of people during Jesus' time was incorrect, was wrong. Their priorities were on, on selling uh, sacrificial animals. They don't focus on the spiritual meaning of those sacrifices. They were busy in making profit by those animals. They don't care about the temple, the physical temple and the spiritual temple. You see, it has connection. If the spiritual temple, this temple is corrupt, we don't care also about the physical temple. Because our priority is always ourselves. But God said already, if we focus on those things, God said, you know what? Uh, give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. No matter what you do, no matter how much you earn, if you don't prioritize God's priority, then everything will be in vain. It's useless. Because in the end, God says, you know what, in the end, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake everything, all nations. Okay? And if you are not ready then you will not be part of my kingdom because 
you know, when you're still alive, that's not your priority. Your priority is yourself. So in the same thing, let me go back again. They were so focused to beautify their houses and they forgot the house of God. And God said, you know what? No matter what you do, it, is, it will be useless. Now, good news because the people responded. And God said, please do work because uh, I will be with you, okay? Be strong. Uh, you can do it. And if you fulfill what I desire for you, then this house of worship will be glorious. And this is our dream as Filipino immigrants here in the Lower Mainland in British Columbia, that we can have our own place of worship that can glorify God. It is a actually a witness to every divers that will pass by in our church building. Only, only the church building, every time they see our church building, the beautiful building that can glorify God, Seventh-day Adventist Church, or Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church, for them or for God and for us, they don't have any excuse, right? Church building is also a witness for all the people that there is a remnant church here in Surrey, remnant church here in the lower mainland, uh, Vancouver. There is a remnant church in Burnaby. Okay. There is a remnant church in New Westminster. There is a remnant church in Surrey. There is a remnant church in North uh, Vancouver. And that is why we, in our group, we set aside some amount of money for this one. And we are uh, looking, okay, somewhere beyond, okay, uh, in the near future, that we can have our own place of worship that can bring glory to our God. Don't be settled with just renting a place. I don't like it. God doesn't like it uh, because we are spending our money in paying the rent. And, uh, and that is not good, right? I want, and if this is your desire, your children to be dedicated in our own church building, then we have to do it. If that children uh, becomes adult, I want them to tie their knot in a marriage covenant in our own church building. And later on, okay, if we're still here, we want them to be uh, serviced uh, during their funeral service. So can you imagine from birth to the grave they will come to our church our own church that can bring glory to our God from uh, conception to the resurrection <laughs> they will be dedicated uh, to our God in our own church building and that is why even me as your pastor, you know, if I die, I want, I want my elder and the other pastor that will, you know, come, he will be the next pastor, to have a funeral service for me in our own church building. And that would be great. So this is the message of Haggai for God's people. And I do believe that this is the message of God for us. Don't think that, hey, Pastor, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of money. Uh, we need 10 million. 
Remember the word of the Lord here. Let me repeat again. Chapter 2 of Haggai. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord God Almighty. If you believe that, then tell me 10 million or 20 million is nothing with God. If you claim that. And that is why, look at your Bible, chapter 2, uh, verses 4, or verse 4, God said, Be strong. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, all your people of the land, declares the Lord. Work, for I am with you. Don't worry. If it is 25 million, don't worry, because God says, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine declares the Lord. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of your of the former house, says the Lord. Why the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house? Because God's people put their priority in this building. Meaning God's people. Okay? The former house, it is only uh, the plan of King Solomon. But this house, the present house, will be greater than the glory of the former house because this is the desire of the people. They responded to God's message. Okay? And if we will respond to that one, then we can say that the glory of the Lord also is in this house. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. So I hope that the message of Haggai is also the message of God for each and every one of us. I said before that those people who decided not to give financially to the church, uh, there is no connection with them and the church because there is no sacrifice. They can go anywhere. They can transfer their membership anywhere, anytime they want. Because there is no connection, there is no sacrifice for them. But the more we give, the more we give our time, our talent, our money. We can say, I sacrifice a lot for this community of believers. You know, I'll do my best to take care of this flock. Because I invested so many things in this church. And you will never leave. You know, you will always look for the best of the church. Because your priority is not yourself anymore, but your priority is God's plan. So may God bless you and continue to bless you as you work and minister to other believers in the church. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that you have given to Haggai. And truly, Heavenly Father, we also need this message because we are in the same situation. We as immigrants, you know, Heavenly Father, we really prioritize what we need. And we have a tendency to forget what is the most important in our lives, and that is our spiritual well-being. Heavenly Father, uh, please put this plan of yours into our hearts and into our minds. That we need to put up church worship in this place to glorify your name 
so that other people may see that there is a remnant group of people in this place. And by doing so, they can also glorify your name. Help us to prioritize your will, your righteousness, and your kingdom. And we do believe, Heavenly Father, that you own everything. You own the silver and the gold. And if we can give prioritize to your kingdom and to your righteousness and to your will, all these things shall be added unto us. Heavenly Father, I pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering, those who are in need of healing, those who undergo chemotherapy and other therapy, Heavenly Father. I know that you know their situation. Uh, you have seen their situation and their needs, how difficult their situations are, Heavenly Father. Please send your angels, O Lord, to touch them and heal them. And we claim your word to your people long, long time ago when you said to Moses, I have seen the affliction of my people. And I have heard their cry. The same with our brothers and sisters who are suffering heavily, Father. They were mourning and crying because of pain. And we do hope, Heavenly Father, you also hear their cry. And that is why we, we pray for them, O Lord. We also pray for our brothers and sisters who are grieving right now. We pray for the uh, Fortaleza family, Heavenly Father. Uh, please be with them uh, for the loss of Brother Roger, who is in the Philippines. Please uh, be with uh, Sister Angie Berto, who is going to the Philippines as soon as possible. Uh, be with her, Heavenly Father. Also pray for our brothers and sisters who have a spoken request uh, for themselves, for their spouse, for their relatives, for the children, Heavenly Father. Uh, please be with them, O Lord. Uh, grant them peace and hope. Uh, grant them the, the understanding that you know what is going on in their lives. And you can uh, change the curse into a blessing. And the Heavenly Father, we all believe that you can all do these things according to your will. We also pray for all of us, O oh Lord, this evening. Please be with us. And grant us your blessing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for your time, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I hope that before you go to bed or before you go to work, please uh, read your devotional, right? This is who we are as a Seventh-day Adventist. We have devotional each day uh, we do that because we want always to be ready right and we do that because we are god's people so i hope and pray that you will do the things that is pleasing that is pleasing to his sight and that will give glory to his name May God bless you all and happy new week to all of you.